I think the main principle is that we need to focus on flexibility. If you design the core standards, the courses that give the core standards, then you can build on that because we never know what students are going to need or want. And we don't know ways in which the industry is going to change. So what we have done in our certificates is to start with a basic core skills or standards curriculum. And then there are either advanced levels or there might be specialized specialty levels that students can go to. Um, increasingly, we're also finding that students are sometimes now transferring. Even though it's a CTE program, they realize that a bachelor's degree would get them further and that in their particular field, it's more helpful. So I think that the key principle is designing for flexibility for students and their futures. We had a program for many years here in manufacturing, and we had a huge lab with these dinosaur-like uh, pieces of equipment, um, probably from the, I don't know, 60s or 70s. And we had, over time, realized that students were not finishing this program. And we went through a process of meeting closely um, a number of times with business and industry that dealt with manufacturing to develop a real clear sense of what it is they need. What we did over about a two-year period of time was that we uh, worked with our faculty so they would design a new program that would better meet the needs of the current industry. Um, that new program is called in, in the Industrial Design Engineering. It's a brand new program, so I haven't heard it very many times. Um, this program replaces the program that was outdated and that in the end students weren't interested in and was not really preparing students for the jobs they wanted. Um, what we realized though was it takes a while from the point where you realize that you need a retool so you develop the curriculum, you test it, you get your facilities ready, you go through curriculum approval and then you get it in place. We also looked at the kinds of teaching strategies that would make it an, an optimally successful program for our students. So we developed a cohort group. So students come in together and they go through the program together. And we know that that makes for better student success and we believe it prepares them better to work in that particular industry. Many students who come to the college say that they want to transfer, they want to get a bachelor's degree, they want a college degree. And we provide the courses and the support services necessary for that. But over time, as students take different classes, they also realize that they need job training. We also have students coming here because they want job training skills. We have people here who are currently in jobs and they need to upgrade their skills. We have people who have lost their jobs because of the economy or other industry trends, and they know that they need to themselves retool so they're more marketable in the job uh, competition for jobs. Having certificates and having degrees in CTE areas gives students more choices, and that's what we try to do. When students walk onto the college, they have some ideas of what they want, but they don't really know until they've tried out a number of things um, what will benefit them the most in the end. So what we believe is that these certificates, which are usually fewer units without the general ed component and the associate degrees in the CTE fields that do have the general ed components, do prepare our students and give them the choices they need to be successful. One of the responses that we are getting, our faculty are getting from business and industry advisory committees over and over again is that they want students to be prepared with soft skills. This is something that we don't hear too much when we hear um, about the need for skilled workers for jobs. Um, soft skills means that they want students who look professional, who act in a professional way, who show up to work on time, who um, are able to work with the public if it's a customer service uh, kind of job. They want students to represent their companies 
and they want them to come in with those kinds of skills. In our, one of the areas where we've really worked on this is hotel and restaurant management. Um, this is an industry that is particularly focused on service and on working with the public in an effective way. In my conversations with the faculty member, um, I learned that he has built in to his course requirements that mirror the requirements in that industry. So students have to be to class on time. Um, they have to dress professionally or dress in uniforms. Um, they have to practice smiling, which is something that you'd think, well, in this era where everyone needs more and more technologically oriented skills, you don't think of somebody who learns how to, to greet the public pleasantly. Um, everything in this program has been designed to prepare these students to take jobs in that industry. So on top of the soft skills that they are learning as a part of their class, they also have a curriculum that is more and more oriented to development of skills that will directly prepare them for industry. So we don't have lecture classes. We don't have students memorizing facts. We have students developing skills, working in labs, doing research that they need to figure out what kind of restaurant they would open, what kind of population they would be serving, what kind of food would work in that particular area that they are focusing on. So I think that a combination of job-related skills that are built into every single class we offer, in addition to a focus on the soft skills that our industry partners tell us they need, um, have been very effective in helping those employers find students who are qualified for the jobs and prepared. You know, when I listened to the presentation this morning, I thought, really, this is what we're trying to do. This is what our work is about. We have worked very hard. Um, the faculty in the departments do monitor very closely what the industry trends are. They do look at labor market information to ensure that they are preparing students for the courses um, and the jobs that are out there. So in, in my view, we are in perfect agreement that this is the direction that we need to go. And I believe that, the, that our college is prepared to join this effort and to help out in many ways for the state and the, and the local economy. I'm interested in regionalization. You know, we have been pretty isolated, in, even though we are geographically very close to a number of community colleges. I think with the um, shrinking resources, it is time to start thinking a little more um, directly and talking more about how can we cooperate and not overlap. And now, we've done this. It's not that this is something brand new, that we've never thought about it before. And we talk to people from surrounding colleges. We make decisions, um, for example, with Citrus College that is very close by. Um, they gave up a program that they could not support, and we had a similar program. They sent their students to us. But we haven't really done the re regionalization um, discussion in such a way that we can systematically start thinking about what needs to be done where and where do, can, how can we maximize the resources that the state is providing for job training. 